the Linux distro community and Spatry's Cup of Linux present the Linux Zoo Crew Episode 7. And today we will be discussing the Ubuntu Roundup. But before we begin, I would like to go ahead and share a few words with you from our founder, Voltam. Hi, I'm Voltam, founder of the Linux distro community. The Linux distro community is a place for people to hang out and discuss Linux, Linux distros, software, and open source. The Linux distro community is a community funded by its members for its members. We are a friendly, welcoming community that encourages people who use Linux operating systems and software to share their passion and knowledge with other people. We believe that when people share information freely, everyone benefits. Our community is also a great place for people who have been using Windows and have been thinking of making the switch to a Linux operating system, a place where they can benefit from the sharing of knowledge. Linux operating systems and software developers have given us all the ability to choose from hundreds of free Linux-based operating systems and thousands of free programs. The least we can do is freely share our knowledge and share with others our experience whilst using this software. If you are using Windows right now and have had enough of all the viruses, spyware, malware and are thinking, there must be a safer way to use the internet. Please consider using a free Linux operating system today. There are many to choose from. Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Pingai OS, and Zorin OS are just some of the more popular, easy-to-use operating systems. And for the person who wants more of a challenge from their Linux experience, there is also Arch Linux. Millions of people only use their PC for internet, social networking, voice and video chat, and email. If they only knew that you can do all that on a Linux operating system safely and securely, that's where a community like ours comes in. Not only are we passionate about Linux operating systems and free software, we want other people to feel the freedom that we do when we use our computers. This is all part of a bigger picture, that as humans, we are rewarded by helping others. We were born to share and promote freedom. We'd love to see you become a part of the Linux distro community. You can voice chat with us on Mumble or text chat with us in IRC. Head over to linuxdistrocommunity.com for details. Join in today in the sharing of knowledge and the freedom that a Linux operating system gives people. Thank you. Today's topic, we will be covering everything Ubuntu. And as you guys know, I have just released the Ubuntu Roundup where I actually took six Ubuntu distributions and I reviewed them all in one episode. Now what happened was, you know, I downloaded all these distros and everything and my free time is kind of limited. And I was thinking to myself, geez, how am I going to review all of these? So I figured I would just cram all of them into one 16 minute episode and uh, surprisingly uh, it was well received. All right, now uh, before we start on today's discussion, I'd like to uh, pass the microphone over to Bartos, who will be my co-host today, and he will introduce all of our speakers. Good evening, guys. All right, so for the group tonight, we have Eaton Sniper Guy, we have Edward Twelve, we have Oscalot. Um, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Pinkcast, Quids, Setkey, Spatry. Tech Man and the Linux Guy 101. All right, welcome one and all, and it's always great to see uh, a number of you guys back for an, another show. I know we've had you on the show before, Bartos, Edward, you've been here. Oscalit has uh, joined us, uh, Pingcasts, he's always around. And Quids up, welcome. It's always good to see you. Setka, welcome. Welcome everybody. Uh, the Linux guy, he just started a new channel. We've yet to see any videos coming out from him just yet. All right, well, today it is the Ubuntu Roundup, and I figured, why not? Let's start with uh, the latest release of Ubuntu, and from distrowatch.com, here is the description. Ubuntu is a complete desktop Linux operating system freely available with both community and professional support. The Ubuntu community is built on the ideas enshrined in the Ubuntu Manifesto, that software should be available and free of charge, that software tools should be usable by people in their local language and despite any disabilities, and that people should have the freedom to customize and alter their software in whatever way they see fit. Ubuntu is an ancient African word meaning humanity to others. The Ubuntu distribution brings the spirit of Ubuntu 
to the software world. Now, I'd like to pass the microphone over to Quidsup, who actually runs Ubuntu as his main operating system, and he has a bigger show than I do in terms of subscribership and that sort of thing. Quidsup, please tell us about your experiences with Ubuntu and about the uh, newest release, since you've had some time to play with that. Well, I'm quite impressed with the new release. I started testing out Ubuntu 12.04 during the alpha stages and actually found it was almost less buggy than the final release of 11.10. So I've been quite impressed. It's been very stable throughout the development and it's good to see what they've come out with for the final release. Have you noticed uh, any improvements in terms of responsiveness and speed? Yeah, the speed has improved quite a lot, both the boot up speed and the program startup speed. Edward? Yeah, well, I've, I did try it from alpha though. I started from beta 1. And um, yeah, I've noticed it's been really improving and what a lot of people may not know is if you was running beta 2 on um, Ubuntu 12 or 4, all you had to do was update your system through Update Manager rather than having to re-download re the ISO when it came out for the 12 or 4 release itself. So they've done a really good job where people don't need to upgrade to using the ISO, but if they find that they have messed up the system and they're getting too many errors, then just install from scratch, basically. But I'm really liking the 1204 as it is at the moment. Bartos. Um, yeah, I started off with um, Ubuntu Beta 2 and did a short video on it as somebody maybe coming new to it or coming from Windows. Um, it was pretty good at that time. For, for basic stuff, it's very good. Um, I did try the, the full release when it came out. I was kind of limited with uh, Unity because of desktop paper, uh, wallpapers, and other items where I like to be a little bit more customizable where they're locked in. Sniper guy. Uh, I run Ubuntu 12.4 as my primary operating system, and there are a lot of bug improvements with it compared to 11.10. My favorite feature is the Unity bar. I do love how it integrates very well with your desktop, plus I just love how they added a slightly toned interface with Unity. Now, Riley on IRC states that he's actually noticed some battery improvements and that his uh, cooling fan is also running a lot better. Vincas, your turn. I haven't actually followed the uh, beta. I didn't really use it much. I did install, uh, the day it came out, I installed 12.04 on my laptop, and it didn't run too well. Uh, it was uh, the CPU hog, and mumble wouldn't work. It, it opened up once, and after that, I kept, uh, it would stop responding every time I opened up mumble. But apparently, I'm the only one uh, who's really had issues. Everyone else has seemed to be uh, pleased with uh, 12.04. Oscar Lit? Yeah, I, I used uh, 12.04 since Alpha 1 for quite a while. And I have to say the big thing about it was the, the stableness of it. There's a lot of bug fixes and has been mentioned. Uh, Ubuntu's done a lot of work with the kernel now and battery usage and all that has been improved vastly. So all in all, I think 12.04 is a very, very good and stable operating system. All right, next we have the Linux guy who just started a channel on YouTube. What is your take on that? I just uploaded a video on uh, YouTube and it's barely has any five has, has five views. And Ubuntu um, is really shaping up really well and it's very it's very it's really good and I've used I've used it since 11:04 and I've really noticed improvements since then and 11:10 uh, Banshee Media Player I think it was uh, very ver um, it was a uh, you know, crashing and very frequently, and it had a bunch of stability issues and stuff like that. And in 1204, they re they replaced it back with a rhythm box. Saka, I actually was running Ubuntu 12.04 on my fiance's laptop. Uh, this is the beta two thing. Um, I did try alpha. I did try beta one, but uh, I waited until beta two to try it on her laptop um, because. To be honest, I got sick of her whinging about her laptop not working properly. So uh, I thought I'd trial it for a few days. Um, and I was actually quite impressed. I was very worried when Unity first came out about uh, the direction Canonical was going to go with it. But I'm actually quite impressed uh, with the way it's working now. It, it, it's looking really, really nice and it's starting to shape up as a really, really good 
uh, desktop environment. Still a little bit heavy on the, the computer, uh, like your CPU and RAM resources, but uh, not as bad as it used to be. And uh, at the moment, I'm also looking at the Edge Ubuntu release and looking at uh, setting it up from uh, an admin's point of view uh, as well. Now, unfortunately, Total OS today couldn't join us when I was actually recording this show. And uh, but he did come in afterwards for the post show chat. And uh, uh, Total OS today, I'd like to get your impressions of the new Ubuntu, and. Uh, you know, what you feel are its weaknesses, what you feel are its strengths, and that sort of thing. Yeah, thank you, Spatry. First of all, let me say that I almost never mess with any alphas or betas because they're just not really polished. However, since uh, Ubuntu 12.04 Alpha 2, I took a chance and installed it on my old, outdated HP Multimedia laptop. It's a Centrino Pentium M, outdated, but a workhorse. I installed it. And I must say, really, even since the Alpha 2, I was impressed. I thought the core operating system, well, I didn't think. I knew because the core system itself did not freeze or crash. I was impressed. Now, some of the software, of course, at the time was still buddy, still buggy, rather. However, after downloading all the appropriate updates you know and keeping it of course up to the point of the final version of uh, 1204 i am impressed i think this is canonical's best released release yet in fact i just uploaded a little review the other night calling 12.04 precise pretty and polished and that's exactly how i feel i think 12.04 should be if it isn't already now i haven't tested all of the software for any you know quirks or any bugs but i think 12.04 might be a viable contender or at least an alternative for windows 7 but overall i must say i'm very very impressed now let me rattle your chain a little bit how about those ati drives stable or horse stable okay well, let me be honest here um in the hp laptop it has intel graphics card not a problem none whatsoever because of the bad experience last month or so with my desktop which does have the ati graphics uh, of course you know the story i had to install and delete uh, 11 10 twice it left a very very bad taste in my mouth i'm not blaming anybody specifically i understand that's you know part on, of how you know some software and hardware you know so sometimes the marriage doesn't work out but on my desktop, I still have 1110. I have not tried yet to upgrade to 12.04, but what I will probably wind up doing sometime in the future, back up all my stuff, you know, onto my external hard drive, upgrade to 12.04, and once I feel secure, I will try uh, installing the drivers on my desktop, which does have the ATI graphics, and see what happens. I will let you know. And then, of course, we have the Tech Man. He's also got a new show on YouTube as well. Tell us your take on the new Ubuntu. Um, I'm not necessarily running Ubuntu in itself. Um, I'm running Lubuntu, but I did use um, Ubuntu from 11.04, and it was I didn't like Unity too well just because it's more of a tablet base, and I still prefer the old-style desktop environment instead of a, more of a tablet-based type uh, icon set. Once we get to the Lubuntu topic, you get first dibs on that one. Okay, looks like everybody's had a chance to chime in on the new Ubuntu 12.04. Uh, I'll give my final impressions of it. I think this is a magnificent replacement for Windows 7, and, and anything will be better than the new Windows 8 that's coming out, obviously. Um, the Unity interface has really come along quite a bit. Uh, it's a lot better than it was when it was introduced, and uh, this is something that, that is usable for many people. It's just a matter of getting used to issuing keyboard shortcut commands and that sort of thing. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself doing a lot of clicking, as I remember Pingcast uh, mentioning about that. Tell us about that, Pingcast. Uh, I forget how to uh, to fi figure out how to get. I think Alan Pope told me that there was a way for it to tell you the uh, basic keyboard shortcuts, and I don't remember how. But yeah, uh, it is just by mouse is insane. Uh, just 
so much clicking, it's ridiculous. Okay, but all in all, I feel that the Ubuntu 1204 long time release is an acceptable replacement for Windows. And alternatively, if you want, if you don't like the uh, Unity interface, you can install install the GNOME panel, and I showed that in the video yesterday, which gives you a classic desktop. Oscillate, you're next. Yeah, I just want to go back on what Pinka said. Unity is difficult, I am quoting the word difficult here, to get your head around. However, if you spend more than 30 minutes on it, you'll know how to use it. No, It's no bother. It does take a little while to get used to, but then again, everything takes a little while to get used to. Unity is a great desktop environment, and I do not know why people have so much hatred towards it because it is very very easy to use it just takes that 30 minutes that 30 initial minutes to get used to and then it's Bob's your uncle you're away you're using a great operating system that's stable quick fast I can't think of any more words to describe it it's just really really good that's all I can say about it also you can go on the webupdate.org website I think it's webupdate.org or .com I can't remember which of the two but there are all kinds of tips for customizing uh, unity to make your needs you can have it run horizontally if you want to and then Ubuntu tweak will let you add all kinds of other customizations to it and uh, it is my hope that they'll eventually have a good port of unity to arch because I would like to actually try it okay well I think we've covered Ubuntu quite well on this let's move on to Ubuntu studio now the Ubuntu Studio is great for all of you multimedia enthusiasts out there. Ubuntu Studio is a variant of Ubuntu aimed at the GNU Linux audio, video, and graphic enthusiast as well as professional. The distribution provides a collection of open source applications available for multimedia creation. And I would like to uh, hand the mic over to Oscalit because he happens to run this one. Go ahead, Oscalit. I find it slightly bloated, but then again, if you are someone who is into media and such like, as myself, I am a professional photographer, that is my day job. It is very useful for that purpose, as it comes with all the codecs you'll ever need, it comes with all the applications you ever need, and I find it, although it is bloated, that's my only downfall to say on it, I find for a beginner, it's very, very useful because it has everything sitting for you, so instead of having to go and figure out what everything's called and all the programs you're going to need, it's already there for you and it's pre-configured and what more can you ask for apart from that exactly and uh, there are a lot of great applications this comes with but actually I found that since Ubuntu studio has switched over to the XFCE user interface it is a little bit lighter it doesn't feel as bloated it feels a little bit more responsive and that can be critical for multimedia enthusiasts such as myself who are looking to be able to get the job done it quickly and efficiently does anybody else have anything on Ubuntu Studio? All right, so I guess our next derivative is uh, XUbuntu, which I am running at the moment. XUbuntu comes uh, fully featured, has uh, the same panel options as the full Ubuntu with um, the messaging and your email and all the notifications, all the nice stuff. It is a lighter version. Um, main Ubuntu is pretty light on its own. They seem to actually use pretty much the same amount of RAM and CPU, which is great for the, the main version. Um, but I, I find it's more customizable. I can get to a terminal quicker um, and other options that I like myself. But um, yeah, Xubuntu is uh, very good. Yes, I would definitely agree, and here is what DistroWatch has to say about that. XUbuntu, or Zubuntu as a lot of people like to call it, is a Linux distribution based on Ubuntu. Unlike its parent, however, Zubuntu uses the lightweight XFCE desktop environment and is optimized for lower-end machines. The distributions include only GTK Plus applications where possible. Now, uh, I have found that Zubuntu is a wonderful distribution for running on Netflix books and lower end machines. Uh, has anybody else tried Zubuntu? I have actually tried uh, Zubuntu on uh, a netbook. Uh, I've got sitting here a little uh, uh, Intel Atom uh, processor with 512 mega RAM. It's one of the first netbooks that came out. Uh, it's the Acer Aspire 1 D250. Um, 
they did originally come out with the one gig, but I managed to cook one of the chips. Um, and with just five twelve mega RAM on the little the little Atom, uh, Zubuntu is amazingly fast. It is incredible, uh, and it doesn't have a lot of the uh, big heavy weight that uh, Ubuntu and Unity have for the uh, for the older hardware. And Quids up has something he wanted to say on this too. Yeah, I've been trying Zubuntu in the virtual machines. So I'd say the latest one, Toro 4, it was really like trying to play spot the difference compared to 11.10 and I actually gave up really. I couldn't hardly see any difference on it. I think they did a few changes with uh, some keyboard shortcuts, but that was about it. But one thing I did notice with Zubuntu, if you've got a higher end machine, is that I found it slower than Ubuntu was. Interesting. Something else I noticed with a Zubuntu is you can bloat it up a little bit if you wanted to. If you wanted to run comp his effects and that sort of thing, uh, it would actually cooperate with it. I, I've had an opportunity to do that in the past. I thought it was uh, quite fun. Uh, that's something I uh, used to enjoy doing. At, and this was actually before I even started my show. I would sit down and I would meddle with different distributions to see what kind of things that I could have uh, put in. And Bartos also wanted to show that Zubuntu has compositing built in, but I can't remember what that compositor is called. Can you remember what that was, Bartos? Um, it's probably X Compositor, um, just the basic one, but uh, it, it allows you to run uh, Curio Doc or um, AWN, and you get the full effects from them with the basic composting without having to install um, uh, any heavy version. Yes, and I uh, recall actually that that was also a, a feature that was included with Archbang, and uh, they were actually using that with OpenBox. So yes, and so yes, you can have compositing effects and that sort of thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump off topic there. Okay, the next distribution I'd like to talk about is Edubuntu. Now, um, uh, it is my understanding here that uh, Edubuntu, um, uh, you've got some experience with that, Oscar. Why don't you tell us about that one? Yes, uh, I used Edubuntu quite a while back. I haven't got time, I haven't uh, found the time to test the new one, however, the previous versions I can talk about. Uh, I find it somewhat useful for younger uh, students. It, Edubuntu is designed for educational purposes, so it has a lot of uh, games and calculators and uh, a lot of physics and chemistry stuff in there. It has a periodic table all in there. Uh, it can be used for people who are a little bit older, however, I find it suited towards the younger side. We were having to talk about this earlier, uh, Spatcher, and you said there was some very difficult stuff you didn't understand. Maybe that's something in the new releases. So, Edubuntu, if you want to teach kids something, it's very, very useful, useful for that sense. Exactly. This and, th and they have these packages in the Ubuntu software centers, and I mean, they, they have packages from preschool all the way up to college level uh, education educational tools and games and that sort of thing. Great for parents who are homeschooling their children. Additionally, uh, the description on uh, the website had this to say about it. Let me pull that up real quick here. Uh, Edubuntu is a partner project of Ubuntu Linux, a distribution suitable for classroom use. The aim is that an educator with limited technical knowledge and skills will be able to set up a computer lab or establish an online learning environment in an hour or less then the and then administrate be the administer administrator of that environment without having to become a fully fledged Linux geek um, how cool is that I mean you know that they can actually set up something like this within an hour and then have and then be able to have their lessons and everything that they can just send over to their students that are occupying these seats Seka you're next I actually uh, just started uh, installing Edubuntu specifically for the video. I haven't actually quite got it done, but I'm going to take a look at the actual administration side of, uh, of Edubuntu here in a little bit more detail and, and see what I can find and exactly how easy it is and all that sort of stuff. But one thing I did notice was the LTSP integration, and it can be set up as an LTSP server. And for those of you that don't know what LTSP is, it's uh, Linux Terminal Services Protocol, I think uh, is the full name for it. Basically what happens is, is uh, you, uh, for schools and things like that, they, can, they usually opt to try and keep their computing expenses down to an absolute minimum. So um, 
they they generally get thin clients and things like that uh, because a, a thin client can cost maybe one hundred dollars or something like that instead of like a, a full desktop system costing two or three hundred dollars for schools. And um, the LTSP will let you um, use these thin clients. And basically, what you do is you're serving the desktop from the server to the thin client, and um, this helps in many ways you don't need to manually go through and install many many systems and uh, you're also uh, able to govern uh, what happens on the thin clients a lot better uh, uh, from the teachers uh, point of view but I'll go into this a little bit more I may have to uh, put up a video myself considering I've run out of time now but uh, uh, once I you know have a look in, in a bit of a play um, well, I'll definitely at least try and get a video up about it. That would be really interesting to see. Now, I have seen an actual video, uh, I think it was like uh, a few months ago, when they were announcing Edubuntu, and they showed the teacher setting up this uh, main computer and then all these thin clients that were connected to it, and how quick and how easy it was just to set all of this up, which is really handy. Now, I don't know, uh, you, you know, uh, I don't know how popular this is going to get uh, in the immediate time frame, but maybe down the line, we'll start seeing more uh, educators uh, using this type of distribution. So it's definitely welcome. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on to something a little bit more interesting. A lot of people don't really care for the Unity interface. And for those of you who have modern computers, something with a uh, you know, with uh, quite a bit of RAM and maybe you have a nice fast video card, maybe Kubuntu is something you'd like to have a look at. And let me um, read the description on this one. Kubuntu is a free user-friendly Linux distribution based on KDE's desktop software and on the award-winning Ubuntu operating system. It has a biannual release cycle and at least 18 months of free security updates for each release. Besides providing an up-to-date version of the KDE desktop at the time of release, the project also releases updated KDE packages throughout the lifetime of each release. Now, uh, I can say this, I've had a lot of fun playing with uh, KDE. I've used it uh, many different in just about every Linux distribution I have tried. It is beautiful but my goodness it is a resource hog um go ahead pinkcast i remember when i built my desktop uh, uh one guy uh, i was looking for an out-of-the-box distro and uh, one guy recommended kubuntu to me and he was a sysadmin and he really liked this so i decided okay i'll have the power with this and i'll i'll throw it on there and it, it was pretty good it had a lot of uh eye candy and uh widgets for, I could get you know weather uh, and other stuff, but there are some bugs in KDE. Uh, there are a lot of features, but there are also a lot of bugs. So uh, I'd have you know, desktop crashes and other stuff crashing. Um, so it, it is resource intensive and it can be buggy. But if you want a uh, feature rich desktop that uh, looks really nice, then KDE is definitely an option to look at. Quids up has a comment he'd like to share with us on this as well. I do like Kubuntu, but the trouble is. I just get on so much better with Ubuntu. Um, actually, resource-wise, I, I know a lot of people say, oh, you need a big, powerful machine for Kubuntu. That is really not a lot different from Ubuntu. And I, I suppose with the, the other aspect, aspects of Kubuntu, that there is lots of customization there. But the one thing I criticise it on is that it should be very difficult to customise. I just find GNOME that bit easier, really. Edward. I tried using Kubuntu for a bit, but most of the programs that it comes with, you know, all these, like, uh, you know, all these, like um, MSN clients and stuff I just didn't really like the look of it and I'm there thinking to myself while I'm using it this is just about as slow as Windows so why would I want to go from Linux to win uh, from Windows to Linux using someone that's just as slow only difference is obviously you've got the security and the vi no virus issue so I thought to myself I'm not really going to bother with any KDE versions of Linux I'm just going to go with Ubuntu and the only time I've had good experiences with KDE is when I used um, Arch and I put KD on Arch, but then again, you still got all the crap that came with it when you just installed all the default packages. Okay, now I had somebody mention on IRC that um, 
that somebody uh, and uh, the text is scrolling so fast I didn't get to see who who it was that mentioned this, but somebody, uh, one of the viewers mentioned that they felt that KDE has too many bugs and that sort of thing. But that hasn't been my experience as of late. Tech men, you're next. All right, thanks, Battery. Um, going back to what was said a minute ago about um KDE being about as bad as Windows, it reminded me a lot of Windows Vista when I used it because it was real buggy and Windows Vista of course crashed a lot because it had serious problems and that's the kind of thing I experienced with KDE and I just didn't like the feel of it. The Linux guy? KDE interface is actually pretty good but it was confusing for me to use though but for other people they might find it uh, good but resource wise um, KDE is a memory hog. I mean it is I mean it uses way more I mean it is uses way more that it should than it should but that kind of makes up for that for all the pretty eye candy and fancy stuff. But that's pretty much all I have to say. Okay, and that was High Six that mentioned that he felt that it was rather buggy and that sort of thing. And that was my experience too until KDE 4.8 shipped out. And um, I'm actually using some components of the KDE 4.8 on my Arch system. And it is flawless. I absolutely love how it performs. It's doing a nice job. I'm not using all of the components of it, obviously. I'm just using the Dolphin File Manager. And then, of course, I have a few uh, KDE apps and that sort of thing but the thing is it is a nice desktop for all of you people who like to customize your system and get the most out of it uh i i, I you know i i like the special effects and and all that stuff and I, I think that was one of the things that initially sold me on linux uh when i decided to switch oscalate you're next yeah, as I was saying earlier again, Spadri, KDE is a very, very pretty desktop environment. If you like things to be pretty, KDE is for you. Uh, as a programmer, I really like the fact that it uses uh, a toolkit called Qt, which is uh, an, an improvement on a GTK, as, as which GNOME uses. So I'm quite looking forward to future releases of uh, KDE, because apparently they are trying to make it less resource intensive. As I have actually seen in, uh, I think it was 11.04 Ubuntu of uh, Kubuntu. It didn't use as much RAM as what I was actually suspecting it to use. So I'm looking forward to seeing what it has to offer in the future for me anyway, because it is very, very pretty to use. Okay, well now let's take a look at the other end of the spectrum here. Uh, we have another distribution for lower end computers, and this one is Lubuntu. And uh, when I fired this up in my virtual machine last night to do uh, my review on it, uh, I was just impressed with how nice Lubuntu actually looks now. Um, they've really, they've really cleaned it up. It has a nicer interface and that sort of thing on it. And let's go ahead and pass the mic over to Bartos. Yeah, the uh, I've used Lubuntu in the past also, and it is an excellent distribution. Uh, it is very good for low end resources. It is very configurable still, and they have a, a great desktop structure. And the best thing is, is it's already running OpenBox underneath. So if you just peel off the LXDE layer, you have a nice OpenBox desktop, pretty well configured. Sniper guy. I run uh, Lubuntu on my old e-machines computer with a one-core processor from 2005, and it runs fairly well. It's just uh, the only problems I'm really having with it is the boot up is pretty slow. That just could be my extremely slow hard drive in it. But other than that, it is a very nice gesture. I loved the uh, new look they added to it and all the excellent wallpaper. Pink cast. Uh, I've actually run Lubuntu on my laptop before, and I really like the distro. It's a nice, lightweight, it looks good, and I like LXD, and I like OpenBox, my favorite environment. So, uh, I really like uh, Lubuntu. Uh, the community is pretty friendly, they're helpful, and I, I find it to be a pretty good distro. Quits up! Yeah, it's been a while since I've run Lubuntu. I did use it on an old laptop. I, had to, I remember it only had 256 meg of RAM, and I, I had to move to that around Ubuntu 10.04 after that got a bit too bloated on it. But yeah, uh, seeing how they've uh, been coming along with Ubuntu, it's uh, I'm considering it is a, a very lightweight distro. They have made it look you know, reasonably pretty. Yes, and the thing is, I, I really like 
uh, Lubuntu. I had an opportunity to play with it quite a bit myself. Uh, this was before I uh, actually switched to Pinguy OS. I was actually able to get the Compiz effects working with it and a number of other things. But, you know, I, I found uh, I didn't stay with that distro because I wanted something that included a little bit more. But the beauty of this is, you know, that's the point behind most of these distributions. They want them to be small enough to where they fit on the CD. And then you can just go into the software centers and install any extra applications that you require. And at the time, I I was using Lubuntu. Uh, I was still fairly new to Linux, and I just wanted to have a distro that pretty much had it all, and that sort of thing. Well, guess what, folks? We still have some time left, so we're going to cover the bonus distros that I did not uh, really get a chance to cover in the Ubuntu Roundup. But before I go into those, I would like to uh, give some credit where credit is due here. I would like to thank the Oscolit Foundation for uh, providing hosting for the MP3 files, and he will also be providing hosting for uh, MP4 files so that you guys can download these videos and keep a copy or put them up on your blogs. All of these videos will be released under a Creative Commons license along with a link to the uh, the uh, actual license that uh, this is being distributed under. I would also like to take this time to thank Setka and Valtem for all of their back-end programming, uh, working with the Mumble server so that we can get this show up and running and that sort of thing, especially to Valtem during the weeks now. Uh, when we're not having a show, he actually has an audio stream that's playing. So if you ever come into the Mumble server during an, uh, an off time and you want to uh, listen to some educational programming, you can jump into the uh, Cup of Linux listening room and you can uh, listen to some pretty neat audio clips. I thought that was a nice little touch. Okay, next, let's discuss the Rescue Remix of Ubuntu, and Sniper actually has a copy of this in his toolbox. Tell us about it. Yes, uh, what's good about Netbook or uh, Rescue Remix is that it's awesome for using Clamx AV, which is pretty much built right into it, and other utilities like a file manager and a FTP client. So if I ever need to be working on a client's computer for if they have a massive virus infection or anything else, if I cannot boot into the computer and use Malwarebytes, I tend to use uh, the Rescue CD and I can easily use Clamx AV, get the viruses out, and uh, I should be able to boot right in. If not, then I use something like Kaspersky Rescue CD, which is also a Linux-based distribution for handling that sort of stuff. Okay, now interestingly enough, I want to read the description because I have a question for you on this. The description says, Ubuntu Rescue Remix is a GNU Linux live system which runs from a CD or USB flash device. It provides the data recovery specialist with a command line interface environment equipped with some of the best free and open source data recovery and forensics tools available. Now, you indicated earlier in the pre-show chat that this actually has a graphical user interface. Is that correct? They do make a copy with a graphical inter user interface. Unfortunately, it is 11.10. They do display that on their websites, but uh, I do know a little bit more of the command line, so I do prefer just using that straight off. Oh, here's a question from uh, from uh, Root on IRC. And uh, do you know this one, uh, Sniper Guy? Uh, what kernel does it come with? And uh, does it come with multiple kernels? Uh, I do not know what kernel it comes with, nor do I know if it comes with multiple kernels or not. Most, I'm pretty positive it just comes with one kernel, though. Okay, and I'm checking uh, the DistroWatch website right now, and it looks like the current release comes with kernel 3.2, and there is no mention of multiple kernels coming with this. Multiple kernels aren't exactly plausible, uh, plausible or possible. <laughs> Um, they are possible. You just have to install the kernel you want, and you'd have to choose it on boot up. So if you have older hardware and maybe you have a 2.4 a series or a 2.6 series kernel installed, uh, you can boot into that. 
instead of the new 3 Series. Seka, what are you doing over there? He just reported that he broke Edubuntu already. Our resident genius broke it, and it couldn't happen to a better person, let me tell you. Okay, next in our uh, listing, we have Mythbuntu. Now, this is for those of you with a Myth TV setup, I believe. Uh, let me read the description on this. Uh, I haven't had much experience with this, and this is one reason why I've never reviewed it. But uh, DistroWatch goes to say that Mythbuntu is an Ubuntu-based distribution and live CD focused upon setting up a standalone Myth TV system similar to not myth or myth dora it can be used to install a standalone front end back end or combination machines mythbuntu uses xfce as a default desktop and provides a provides a graphical control center to configure the system and apparently this is something for home entertainment systems has anybody used this I've used it for uh, in the virtual machine. Um, basically, it's already um, similar stuff that you can already do if you just download the necessary components on Ubuntu. Um, you can download Myth TV on the software center, as far as I'm aware. Um, I don't really have much use for it because I don't have a TV tuner or anything, so I just tend to use XMBC for all my media. I actually used um, Myth Ubuntu uh, when it. Well, I think it was during one of its first releases, uh, 8.0 or something. I haven't had a chance to test the latest one yet, but uh, um, back then it was, yeah, it was quite buggy and a little bit weird. That's probably why I haven't been back to touch base on it just yet. Um, I, uh, I actually generally prefer to run you know, XBMC on top of an Archbase or something like that if I'm going for a media center distribution, but... Um, like I say, I, uh, I have used it, but uh, it was quite some time ago, so I'd have to go and have another play, I, I think. And I had XBMC uh, installed in Pinguy OS. Thank you for reminding me, Linux of us. Uh, I did have that installed, but you know what? It was kind of buggy for me, too. I couldn't quite figure it out and that sort of thing. So, you know, I, it was just something that I ended up uninstalling myself. Quids up, or did you want to chime in on this? Yes, I, I set Mythbuntu up uh, on my friends. He wanted to build a home theater PC, but he wanted to be able to record a live TV on it. And actually, it was excellent getting Mythbuntu set up. It recognized the hardware straight away. Um, but I did have trouble with um, tuning the card. It, it's really confusing with their, where they've got the front end and back end. And there's not a lot of in, not a lot of instructions, really, on the internet. So it's, it's a bit of a struggle there. I think it probably would be useful if there were more videos on how to set up Mythbuntu. Trouble is, though, it's not something I can get into myself because where I live, I, I can't even receive the TV signal. It's something I'll struggle with on that one. Uh, and yeah, and on that... Uh, uh, home theater PC I did build for my friend. He, he kept with it for a while, but uh, we, we had to switch to Windows. He just, people prefer that interface, which is a shame, really. Okay, and the thing is, I went out and I purchased one of these Hop Hog USB TV carts, which allows me to uh, plug my cable into my computer and watch television. I couldn't really figure out how to set that up in uh, XBMC, but I was able to get it to work using a simple little program called TV Time. And uh, but luckily, because I have uh, cable television, I only had to set it up on one channel, and I have a little box hooked up where I could use a television controller on the little box to switch through all the channels and that sort of thing. So it, it would be nice to see a lot more documentation on how to make good use of that software. Okay, we had a request from uh, High Six. Uh, who asked, because we've covered all of uh, the distributions for Ubuntu at this point, and I figure we have a few minutes left here. Uh, he wanted to talk about Flash in Linux. Now, as everybody knows, Adobe has decided to, to put the kibosh on Flash. I'm sorry, that was Riley who wanted to discuss Flash in Linux. Uh, apparently, they are no longer going to be supporting Flash, which really isn't a major issue because HTML5 is taking over and everything is going to be switching to a different format. Now, as a Flash developer myself, 
you know, that puts a little cloud of doom over my head because, you know, I'm no longer offering Flash-based websites because there are going to be people that aren't even going to be able to view these. Uh, who would like to start on Flash on Linux? Go ahead, Oscalit. Flash is always something I had a lot of experience with. Uh, when I was a lot younger, I used to do Flash websites. Uh, Flash on Linux... It, it's not, it's Flash on Linux shouldn't be, that shouldn't really be what we're saying, it should be Flash on every device. Flash is dying on every operating system no matter what it is. And the reason is because of Apple and their iPhones. Most uh, website developers these days prefer if they don't use Flash because they want it to work on iPhones and they want it to work on Android. Android does support uh, Flash, it's the only mobile phone at the moment that supports Flash. So thanks to the mobile industry, Flash is dying out. However, Adobe has offered quite a little cool application that converts uh, Flash files into JavaScript. So if you do don't want to use Flash anymore, uh, it's called it's called Muse. It's called Edge. It's called it's called Edge, and it's an application that converts uh, Flash to JavaScript, which is quite useful in my opinion. Interesting. I'm gonna have to have a look at that myself because I love using Flash to create dynamic content, but late. Lately, I've only been using Flash for creating video elements and that sort of thing. Uh, Sniper Guy, you're next. Yes, uh, now, of course, like I said, uh, Linux is not the only platform that Flash is not available on. Uh, Adobe, not only is Apple killing it off, but Android is also killing Flash off in the future. So, almost every single mobile platform is pretty much dead with Flash, and here pretty soon, all mobile or all desktop platforms and all uh, server platforms even should be killing off Flash in the future. Bartos. Yeah, from my understanding, um, Chromium, uh, not, I'm not sure of Chromium, but I know Google Chrome already has an API where you don't need the Flash plugin anymore. So if you're running Chrome, Google Chrome, which does have uh, binaries where you can install from the website for Linux, uh, you can run Flash without having to install any Flash plugin or anything like that uh, unnecessary. So if anybody knows about Chromium, go ahead and speak up. Um, but of course, Firefox still needs the complete Flash plugin. Okay, and then next we have Setka. Yeah, um, Bartos is correct. Uh, Google Chrome has the, the API, um, and I'm pretty sure Chromium does as well. I use uh, Chromium Dev from the AUR in Arch, so I'm pretty sure it has uh, the API as well. But I would like to point out that uh, HTML5, I've had a little bit of uh, mess, time to mess around with HTML5 uh, here and there, and um, from my understanding, it is incredibly easy. Um, it, it really uh, puts a, a whole new level above Flash. It really does. So I'm I'm not too worried about the the support drop for Flash um, at all, uh, especially coming from a web developer slash anything developer. Um, the like I say, HTML5 is incredibly simple. Um, it's nice, um, and it it's a lot. In my opinion, it's a lot more snappy than and Flash, and it doesn't require any special plugins or codecs or anything fancy like that. It just works. Quids up! I'll be glad to see the end of Flash in Linux. Uh, I do blame Flash for where I got a virus infection in Ubuntu back in November, but before anyone gets too concerned about that, the patches have been issued in Flash now, and that vulnerability is no longer there. Uh, but one thing that is most important to me, and for many others, is being able to watch the YouTube videos with HTML5. I know for a lot of videos you can do it, but for the YouTube partners where you got the advertisements, I remember at one time time that HTML5 wouldn't play that. So it'd be interesting to see what comes of it really, whether YouTube will be able to implement HTML5 properly, then yeah, no problems. Pincast. I find Flash to be resource intensive, so I can't wait for that to go because it uh, fills my CPU up pretty uh, well, and it can be a CPU hog sometimes, and it's pretty annoying. And then you got to worry about getting Flash installed on your system just to look at YouTube videos and whatnot. Edward? Yeah, um, Flash, is, uh, Flash is really dying off now. Um, I think it'd be better once YouTube goes fully HTML5 because I've had issues on Linux even using Chromium. 
on um, even though Flash is supposed to be built into Chromium on on, um, on Linux, I still have issues with sometimes videos won't play, they won't show up, the resolution won't change, the f issues with full screen. Maybe in time uh, YouTube might be able to have an option where you can play it via Flash or via HTML5. And like you said, it does tend to use a lot of resources when you watch a video in Flash on the CPU and everything. So I think Flash will just basically dig its own grave eventually and HTML5 will be basically on top. As a Flash developer, you know, I paid a lot of money for my Flash software. I'm going to still continue using it. I'd like to thank Oscalip for sending me that link. I will post that in the show notes for those of you who are interested in converting your Flash projects over to Java and that sort of thing. But you know what? I have found HTML5 to be a resource hog. Some of these sites that people send me through from Facebook or Google+, Plus, you know, they'll, they'll send me links to some sites they think will be of interest to me I'm really not seeing you know where HTML excuse me where HTML5 is really going to have a benefit now uh, one thing I have noticed is that uh, Arch has been receiving updates to Flash and also people who are using the Flash plugin within their web browsers like Firefox and other browsers besides Chromium will still be able to receive security updates they're not just they're just not going to get the latest versions and it wouldn't surprise me in the least if the community steps up and does something about Flash as well. So is it going to die? Yes. Is it going to die quickly? I doubt it. Uh, we'll have to see what the future holds. Yeah, um, Flash, yeah, we won't be able to get any new versions, but like you said, um, they will be doing security fixes. I think it's three or five years. Um, and after that, it will be non-existent. But hopefully by then, HDMI has HDMI 5 has matured, and they've worked all the problems out of it with resources and such. And it'll be much easier for web developers to embed videos and other programs into uh, web pages with uh, 5. Don't throw away that Flash software just yet. I, I'm still making good use of it, making video elements and that sort of thing that I can pull into my videos. Some of you may have seen some of the videos that I put up where I had goofy cartoon characters appearing with me in the video and stuff like that. And I'm going to still use that technology. Obviously, I paid a lot of money for my software and that sort of thing. So I'd like to see where HTML5 is going to go. Uh, it's sad to see Flash go, but, you know, that's the cost of uh, progress, I suppose. Well, I will say this has been a wonderful discussion. I would like to thank everybody on my panel who uh, was here. Uh, looks like we uh, recorded uh, quite a bit of footage here for me to edit later this evening. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank Bartos, Sniper Guy, Edward, Oscalit, Pinkass, Quids Up, Tech Man, and the Linux Guy. I'm going to have links for all of these people in the show notes so that you can check out their shows. Every one of these shows are well worth your time and effort. Thank you, all of you, for appearing on the show. Please leave your comments below. We'll also have links to where you can download a copy of the video or the audio for viewing on your mobile devices. And for those who have participated in the show, you guys are free to go ahead and upload these videos over to your blogs and your uh, video channels and that sort of thing. Thank you, all of you, for a wonderful show. I'd like to thank everybody in the listening room who has been participating with us on IRC. And of course, I'd like to thank all of the listeners at home who are listening on YouTube. Thank you, all of you, for your support. And uh, we will see you next Saturday night for our Zoo Crew episode. Today's show was brought to you by the Linux Destroy community. Visit us today at linuxdestroycommunity.com and chat with us on Mumble or in IRC on the Freenode Network in the Linux Destroy Community channel. The Linux Destroy Community. Freedom through the sharing of knowledge.